Hi, folks, and welcome to another episode of Yes and Ask Me, a show based out of their stage here in San Antonio, Texas, where I, Rick, get to pick the brains of some of the senior level improvisers of this improv community. Uh, today's episode is going to be about long form and short form types of improv. And I actually have kind of a power panel here. Uh, every single one of the members of my panel today was one of my instructors at Bear Stage. And I'm just gonna go ahead and start with Tina Jackson. Tina, would you uh, wanna want join us? Hey, Rick. Hey, Tina. Uh, like I mentioned uh, in my intro, Tina, you were my level uh, four and six instructor um, oh, yeah, at, at the Bear Stage Training Center. And you also, by the way, are the owner and operator of Bear Stage. Yeah. Even on bad days. <laughs> Thanks for reminding me. <laughs> uh, Tina, um, since mm -hmm. today's show is about long form and short form, can you Love give it. us a bit of the, your, yeah, give us some of your history. Uh, how long have you been doing uh, improv in general? How much of that is long form? How much of that is short form? Uh, great. Yeah, I started uh, improvising in the year 2000. So uh, this is my 20th year performing. Um, I, as I think a lot of improvisers would, uh, say as well is like I started in short form and I did short form for a number of years, at least five or six, uh, before really, um, catching long or, you know, long form catching my attention and then, uh, really sinking my teeth into that. So I, I would say a majority of my career, um, has been predominantly long form. Uh, but it all started from those short form roots back in 2000. So in high school and college, that's where I primarily focused. All right, good. Well, Tina, thank you so much for joining us today. Appreciate Thanks, it. always. Uh, my next guest was my level one, two, and three instructor at Bear Stage, uh, Brian Scribner. <laughs> Brian, you want to join us? No, you don't. Oh, <laughs> well, you have to join us. Brian, thank you for coming. <laughs> thank you. Thank you for bringing your beard. I, I really appreciate it. Thank you. <laughs> right. Uh, can you give us a little bit of background? Um, how long have you been doing improv? Uh, how much of that has been in long form? How much in short form? Uh, I started doing improv in the 1980s. So, um, yeah, that's when I started. Uh, no, I, no, I started when I was in high school. Huh? You started in high school? Yeah. We never yeah. talked about that. No, I'm a man of secrets. Um, started a prom in high school and and I did theater and did this and blah 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 so uh most I will say that most of my experience has been in short form uh long form probably the past three years four years ish uh really focused um but uh you know dabbled in long form way back in the day um but uh yeah I've been doing I've been doing improv since before some people were born Mm. <laughs> Great. Well, Brian, thank you. Thank you so much for joining us. And uh, uh, I want to I want to pick your brain about those secrets that you uh, just mentioned to us. That's going to be exciting. <laughs> Tina's shaking her head now. Uh, Lex Simpson, would you please uh, join us? Lex. Uh, hey, Lex. Lex, you were my level five instructor at Bear Stage. Yeah. And one of Brian's too at Comedy Sports, if I remember. What two? Right? Level two, three? Oh, shit. Level two. Yeah. The only, oh, the only class I ever took. He hates to admit that he learns. Uh, wait, so so Lex, you, you were his level two instructor. Brian, what level did you teach Lex? <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> all right, good. No answer. I learned things from Brian. I, I learned things from everybody, but I'm sure. I'll Give me a second. I'll figure it out. I learned how to grow a beard. Let's put it that way. I, I took lessons. There, it's oiled. It's trimmed. Uh, dyed. I it's a good beard. I'm not gonna lie. About it. So, Lex, have... give us give us some background. How many years have you been doing improv? Uh, how much how much long form? How much short form? I've been playing uh, improv for about eight years. I started in short form. Uh, most of that early stuff, but a lot of all my education was up in Austin. Most of my education was in Austin, etc., and a lot of workshops around the world, which are usually almost exclusively long form workshops. I almost started doing long form the same, like parallel from short, uh, but I stuck with short all through many, 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 many years, as many as I was finding opportunities to do long as well. I artistic directed short form for a hot minute. I've been in a lot of long form groups, the short form groups. I've been in long form groups that use short form in them, which I think is, is something we can talk about later, or elements of short form. Uh, so 
I've been really sitting on the fence the whole time I've been playing, quite frankly. Yeah. All right. Cool, cool. Okay. Uh, okay. So we, I mean, we started talking really immediately about you guys' experience with long form and short form. Uh, Tina, I want you, if you don't mind, give us some background. What do we, what do we mean when we say long form, and what do we mean when we say short form? Cool. Um, I get this question quite a bit because when you throw around terms like long form and short form uh, regarding improv, uh, most people don't know what those mean uh, unless you've been doing improv for a while. Um, short form improv uh, is predominantly. Um, uh, shorter scenes, more game-based, uh, something where the rules of the scene are generally pre-established uh, to the actors and the audience, um, where you say, you know, uh, somebody's throwing a party and everybody's got weird quirks, you know, like introduce introducing the game before the game happens um, so that the improvised uh, audience knows a little bit of what to expect. Um, and it takes suggestions a little bit more frequently. Uh, long form improv, uh, which is the primary focus of Bear Stage, um, it, it takes generally one or a couple of suggestions at the top of the show. And then we'll go for like 20 minutes based on those suggestions. So it gives the ability, it's a little bit more free, it's a lot more free form, honestly. Um, but it uh, gives the ability for a, more of a piece to emerge rather than just a scene. Um, and there are arguments for and against both sides. Um, Lex is already so excited about this conversation. Mm -hmm. uh, but in general, we're talking about multiple suggestions and rules of, of the scene, looking more scene by scene by scene by scene for short form. It's more whose line is it anyway style, if you like the pop culture reference. Um, now there's a pop culture reference finally for long form, uh, middle edition Schwartz on Netflix. Uh, takes suggestions in the form of like, talking with an audience member and then using those suggestions throughout like more of a piece. So those are, that's like more of a definition of the differences. So when you mentioned there's, there's arguments for and against either one, do you mean like preferences or people, what people enjoy watching one versus the other? Oh, totally. Uh, different people have different styles. Uh, you know, any, any art has different styles um, that people find proclivities toward. Um, Lex has really stayed on the fence. I have I, I done a lot of short form uh, in my day, but have primarily in the last you know 15 years focused mostly on long form. So I definitely fall more in a long form camp only because that's where I find the most creative freedom and that's where I have the most fun. Uh, but there, uh, there are people in the improv world who very much look down on short form and I'm not positive why, uh, but it happens, they're out there. Um, I like both, I prefer personally long form. Okay, I'm, I'm gonna stick on you for just a little bit longer, Tina. Uh, when you say you prefer long form, why do you prefer long form over short form? Uh, I personally like the ability to take those suggestions and be inspired by them. And it, it gives, uh, all right, all right, short form boys. Calm down. <laughs> it's purely a preference to play. References uh, can be wrong. It's totally okay. <laughs> I'm so offended. Um, but <laughs> this is the last time I let you on our webcast. Uh, no, I prefer, uh, performing long form because I think there's, uh, more freedom and creativity within it. I like, um, th I like the freedom that long form explores as far as taking a suggestion and then saying, you know, thanks, this show is completely ex inspired by you, the audience, and then going until the lights go out. Like, I, I like the freedom of that. Um, and I think there's a lot of, it's more fun for me than playing within a strict, a stricter set of rules. Okay. So, Brian, um, you taught me the rules of long form. You taught me the rules of relationship and character and, and the basics of yes and. Um, but you are also coming from, uh, you have this whole uh, short form background. Um, which do you prefer, if you even prefer one over the other? I, I prefer this. This is a good I one. prefer the hybrid. I prefer taking short form uh, basis, basics, for short form game type thing and extending them out uh, into long form uh, shows, um, taking a, a, a simple basic game and then saying, hey, instead of doing this for just four mm -hmm. minutes or three minutes or two minutes, what if we did this for 15 to 20? Let's see how it goes. Um, uh, that is, uh, I, I have formed so many teams doing that. <laughs> um, you have taking something... formed so many teams only doing that. Yes, yes. Uh, but but uh, just, you know, saying, hey, look, let's take this thing that's meant for this short period of time 
and spread it out and see how that works and see how that goes and have fun with it. Um, uh, I, yeah, I, I like uh, uh, combining the two. Uh, okay, so Lex, why have you remained on the fence this entire time? Uh, okay, so lots of different things. Primarily, and you're going to have to cut me off because I will ramble for the next hour and a half about this, <laughs> is that it really is emerging. I think the issue mostly when choosing short or long form has to do with that there is a difference. And frankly, I don't really think there is. At the core, the best improv for both is played exactly the same. You will see tons of uh, long form shows where the scenes are no longer than a short form scene. A, your average uh, montage is gonna have be a series of three to five minute scenes, which is no different. Uh, a lot of short form shows such as like a theater or a comedy sports or any of those things are all wrapped up in one big event that still can be considered a long form idea uh, within it. I think they're both have strengths and weaknesses and all sorts of stuff. And they're both beautiful what, for what they are. Frankly, the reason I sit on the fence is because I just like playing. I really just enjoy playing. I like both of them for different reasons and choosing one seems absurd to me. Uh, from all the aspects of my improv, just like straight improv, if you take out form, game, any of that uh, idea, I think personally should be the same no matter what. A short form scene, regardless of the game you're playing, should be played exactly the same as a long form scene. Uh, exactly is a little dramatic, but very similar uh, when you break it down to brass tacks. All of the yes ending, the commitment, the character. Uh, one, you just potentially have longer to sit in or, or filter it out. Whereas in short form um, or game-based improv, as some play places talk about it to try to delineate that, but that's really mostly just a defense against the long form community for constantly crapping on the short form community. I agree that the long form community does really crap. Oh, yeah. And I can, I, I'm pretty I sure I know why, if it makes you feel any better, but. Uh, <laughs> I think it's largely unnecessary to do oh, so. It's perfect. just, I mean, I don't find sculptors really shitting on uh, <laughs> <laughs> like painters. Painters. I don't yeah. think it's necessary for there to be I think you can have a preference like oh I prefer sculpting over painting or, or painting over sculpting there's not one that's better like in any sort of objective way it's all subjective or kiln sculpting from statues or something or yeah. oil painting and acrylic painting or yeah yeah I mean um, all art can be defined in a lot of like different breakdowns but this is just you know improv's breakdown and right. I do think there's a cool um uh mixed media art if you will in combining some short and long form aspects uh brian and i differ uh artistically on some of that but that's what makes us a collaborative group of artists <laughs> um oh, i've done long form i've done short form one thing that i can say tina is that you mentioned earlier is how in short form typically those rules are identified early on um when you when you first start the show and i think that what you were hinting at earlier is that when you're doing a long form session, 20 minutes, right, from a suggestion from the audience, you can create the game on, you know, by yourselves. The players can make the game happen. And I'm thinking of one in particular that um, you and Alex did when you were you did a show together. Um, I think it was Time Out, and I think that you're, you're duo together. And um, fill in the gaps for me here, but you were a couple, and you were in your apartment, and you were arguing about what your relations should be or shouldn't be. And suddenly this game began to happen and it was beautiful to watch. Um, Lex, you hinted at something about a movie and Tina went to a improvised <laughs> um, a DVD. You're talking about now. Exactly. And one after another, she began to pull out different DVDs of, of rom-coms, identifying the relationship in there and how you guys could do that one. Or, or maybe this other one. Or, you know what, how about this other one? And one after the other. And Lex, you just let Tina go with this. I believe the and line he, was, give me three more examples. And then, he, <laughs> and then he was like, you know what, I could use another example. And I had to keep going with it. Uh, yeah. But you're right. That would be, you know, it's it's one thing to say, oh, what's the name of a chick, you know, like, a, um, you know, in a short form, I think, to create that same moment. You say, um, list off a bunch of uh, rom-coms or chick flicks or whatever. And then we can use them throughout the scene to help reestablish our relationship. I, I think the misconception therein is that that can't also be done in a short form scene, in well, a short form game. There are, uh, to a certain extent, what you could call a meta game that can be discovered and found in short form games as well, in uh, game-based stuff. That 
base one is just more than anything for the audience, uh, just to let them know what's going to happen, what what they're expecting to see. That way, we can either fulfill, break, etc., their expectations. Everything that happens underneath that, there's no reason that that's all we're doing. There are some places, to be fair, and I can get into the three what I consider the three types of short form I've seen that emphasize it a little more. But at the end of the day, everything in both short and long form can be done and in short and long form. That's, that's the thing. They're so incestuous that it, it's frustrating to see such a hard delineation sometimes. Yeah, no, yeah. That's I, what I like. I like the incestuous, incestuous relationship of long form and short form. Oh my God. I'm going to turn Brian's camera off. Sorry. <laughs> be on this. I knew it when I said it and it was just a too <laughs> damn bad. That we invite well, him. Uh, speaking of incestuous relationships, uh, Brian. Um, no, no, no. <laughs> I'm going to do it. Uh, <clears throat> Brian, you are in a trio called um, Grumpy Old Men. It's yeah. you, yeah. it's Dave Van, and it's uh, Phil. Bernhardt. 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 Yeah. Um, all improvisers uh, here in San Antonio. And this trio that, you, that you're in, Grumpy Old Men, it's, I think the form is called a pretty flower or a Spokane, where essentially you're doing a scene and every now and then you can jump out and go, well, let's, let's see that thing that we just mentioned. You jump out, you perform this little short scene uh, of something that was previously mentioned, like a past, a cutout, you jump back into the main scene and you kind of sometimes go back and forth this way. Sometimes you don't always do that in this in Grumpy Old Men. So I think that's the, I'm not gonna go incest, but that's the marriage, uh, mm -hmm. the consensual mm -hmm. marriage mm -hmm. that, <laughs> that, that you're talking about, Is am I correct? Yes, uh, Grumpy Old Men was formed uh, based on the short form game Cut To, where we're talking about something and we go, hey, let's cut to that. And then we cut to that and we see that happen. And then we cut back to where we were before. Um, and that was the premise and the basis for, hey, let's take this thing that I've seen done in a four minute scene or a three minute scene or a two minute scene. And let's spread that out to a 15 to 20 minute scene. And we'll just continue to do it. But if that's all we did, it would be garbage. If it was just continuously jumping to something else, it would be nonsense. It would be pointless. So we right. have to do the actual improv improv as well where it's like hey let's do characters and scene work and relationships and know each other and all these other things that are vital to both i would agree uh to i i would argue too that um a spokane while it's inspired by a cut to is not exactly the same as what <clears throat> we're talking about so i there is a long form called spokane and i think it's very close to what you're describing but it's it Ar yes, to thank you to argue uh, a long form point. Spokane <laughs> flowers different. Uh, it, to argue both for and with that, uh, in Chicago, I saw a legit shotgun, which is arguably uh, a mono scene is arguably the most long form you can form long. Uh, so long. That did that. Part of their show was every so often they break out and show one of their backstories and then come back to their shotgun. So it's like the idea that they have to be so uh, separate again, it just seems so. Arbitrary. Oh no, I agree that there's no need for it. I think stylistically, I think um, st from an audience perspective, I think short form and game-based improv is a lot more accessible to no. an audience. I think it tells the audience exactly what you can expect to see, where your suggestions are gonna be used and, and, and what sort of to expect. And so, uh, what Lex said earlier is you can either fulfill or or subvert or whatever with that as far as like what the audience does expect. So I think from a novice improv uh, audience perspective, I think short form is way more accessible. I think it's way more easy to understand. I think it's uh, way easier to do. Um, I, I don't want to call short form easy because I think they're both they both have challenges within them. So I don't want to simplify. Um, but uh, but I think from an audience perspective, I know my mother still prefers short form over long form. And that's not to say she's stupid. Hi, mom. Um, it's it's that she Call she likes home. knowing what she can see and then seeing whether it happens or it doesn't. Um, uh, and long form is still just like, I don't how do you still do that? I don't. I don't. Uh, and I think if just to put on a tinfoil hat for one of my various uh, theories behind it, I think it's a lot of the 
vitriol is too harsh of a word. A lot of the frustration or a lot of the, the, the bad rep that short form gets versus long form is that short form is infinitely more accessible to everybody. It is. Whereas it, the old quote is uh, long form is for improvisers and short form is for everybody else. Any, anybody, any Johnny off the street can go sit down in a short form show and at least get the idea of what's happening. Uh, there's no guarantee that they can sit down in a random long form show and fully, I mean, I've, we've all seen at least one, uh, hell, sometimes I don't get heralds, but we've all seen at least one, uh, you know, people show up and just kind of uh, the drool starts to pool because they're not sure what's happening with this interwoven story of. Yeah, are they supposed to know each other? Is that the same guy from the first scene? Is that the, right, you know, yeah. like, is that, you know, uh, I think it's, I think because long form has a lot more freedom within it, there's also a lot more um, pitfalls to really fall into. And I think it's harder in general to do a show that is overwhelmingly good in long form. Or at the very least accessible. I yeah, mean, I wouldn't sure. even say the quality necessarily. Yeah, no, for sure. As far as accessibility goes, short form wins. Um, uh, I typically, and this is an argument too, is that I know we've had before, um, is I typically find long form more artful uh, because I think there's a lot more uh, collaboration that happens. There's a lot more freedom within it. And so there's a lot more trust that also has to go in it because there's not a pre-established set of rules aside from perhaps a form as far as like where we're going from minute to minute and what we can expect in the next moment. Um, you know, being in shows before that turns narrative and I was like, oh, I didn't know we were doing a narrative tonight, but it seems like we're going this way is like, you know, there's a lot of like pivot, 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 pivot every single moment. And I'm not going to say that that can't happen during short form. Of course it can. Uh, but I generally typically enjoy long form more because of the lack of rules within it. I'm a rebel. I don't like rules. <laughs> to be fair, uh, I do, me personally, generally, I play both and I'll love playing both every day. I think I prefer generally to watch long form just because I'm a crusty old man. I, I, I can't, I can barely watch improv as it is anymore, but. <laughs> uh, so what happens when you get so much experience? You've seen a lot of improv. You see the strings, um, yeah, but yeah, yeah. I don't know if I had a point to that. I'm going to retreat. You, well, I think even just like, which one do you prefer watching? Brian, which one do you prefer watching? Um, I'm a man. I'm Switzerland. Uh, <laughs> I, again, I like watching the fusion of the two. I enjoy what I like watching is a long form performance. And I go, you know what? Here's what they're doing. They're playing this game and this game. And they just kind of combine the two. Uh, the, uh, the last graduation show that happened, um, not mythos, but the one before that. Jump stitch. Jump stitch. Uh, I was like, oh, they took short form games and they just expanded it out. Got it. Don't tell cool. Steve that. Don't ever tell Steve that. He would hate them. <laughs> <laughs> Steve, uh, don't watch this. <laughs> and a lot of short form games came out of things that happened in a long form show. It's literally yeah, like, yeah, yeah. we can condense that. Oh, yeah. How do, we, how do we teach this? We can teach it with a short form game or we can pull this moment from a long form show and turn it into an exercise. I think a lot of the exercises we teach in our long form classes are essentially short form games because they practice some of the same skills. I mean, a lot of the same skills, all the same skills really, but in varying uh, kinds, you know, when we're doing a genre workshop, we'll work with some genre short form games. And we'll, when we're working uh, on character stuff, there's so many character short form games and so many, you know, panels and call-ins and care, you know, like fleshing out backstories and stuff. You can use a lot of short form to teach long form, and it's because they're so interwoven. Rick, yeah. Do you recall during the character class where you had to do a TED talk? <laughs> um, I, I do. It was like a like a monologue, was it? Uh, yeah, in a, it was a TED talk with some character. Yes, I do. And yeah. that game was pulled from a long form show that was literally just improvised TED talks. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> you now we're so creative. <laughs> There's benefits from both sides of uh, the long form thing. I, I think I like watching fun. So a lot of times short form can be a lot more fun. I like watching people having fun, being silly and enjoying themselves. And I think in long form people get, I think people get headier in long form than they do in short form where they're really okay. trying. I would say for sure. Uh, so I like the mix. I will say it is, and I think this is one of the other, you can mark these down. I should have had a dry erase board. Uh, one of the marks against long form 
for long form improvisers is that it's really hard to find genuinely good short form. Short form is very accessible. It's very, you can train anybody to play a short form game and that's not a okay. negative against it. I think that's a positive for short form. It's, yeah, it's, 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 I think it's probably why most of us start in short form and then move into long form is because it's where most uh, theaters, training centers, colleges, high schools, uh, wh wherever you find improv first, it's where they start. It's the starting ground because it's the most accessible because you can take it in these smaller doses and you don't have to learn like this mountain of, of like theory and then just say, I hope you can use some of this and, and throw them into long form. And long form, I think is not where most people start. I think most people start in short form. Depending on where you are, I guess. Depending on where you are and what's accessible, yeah. I do, and I have noticed generally, and I'm gonna pull a statistic out of my butt, I don't know, let's say 70%. Most people who start short form can transition to long form a lot easier than vice versa. Yeah. Agreed, um, agreed. If you start long form, I think it's much harder. I found it even in, more recent years, because I predominantly have focused on long form, even though I know short form, I'm familiar with a lot of it. I've done it for years. I found myself very adept at it in a lot of ways. Going back to short form in little bursts, like here and there to be like, oh, I'll sit on this team short form show. Or sometimes when I'm traveling, I'll sit in with teams wherever I am. And whatever you're doing, I'll do too. And experimenting back into short form, I feel like I'm trying to like milk these scenes a lot longer than they are. And like, I'm missing some of my quick wit kind of stuff because I generally play like a slower style. Uh, and so and then you're like, yeah. And I then you're like, okay. a lot of my depth sometimes in short form because I'm not as used to it. I think it's harder for me to shift my brain that way than it is for me to uh, have been playing short form for a number of years and then slow it down and realize I don't have to edit the scene. Uh, I don't have somebody who's going to say and scene for me. Like I, I can end it myself uh, and and self edit uh, a thing. So I think it's I think it I think what you said is exactly true. I think short form to long form is easier than going long form to short form. Scribbles. <laughs> so here's your. Well, Brian, you gotta say something, Rick. <laughs> I want to know what Brian will say. I like both. Can you just hold up a sign that says that and we can just like remove it? We'll just keep panning back to you. They yeah. are. Okay, so so this question goes to Brian. Um, Brian, as you know, I took a I took a level uh, uh, 101 and 201 course at Comedy Sports. And I loved them. I had, I mean, those were my very first two improv classes and I had a fantastic time there. It was so much fun. Uh, and then I transitioned to two long form at Bear Stage. And uh, I still enjoy them both. I, I'm a lot like you guys. You know, now you guys have so much experience and I'm not too surprised that you're coming from all of these different backgrounds and you have so much experience that you can find, you can appreciate them both. But Brian, what do you tell somebody that is focused on one and says, you know what? I don't care about the other one. I want to get really good at this one, at the long form or the short form. And this is all that I need. Uh, honestly, Good on you, uh, I guess. Um, I mean, if that's what you prefer, that's what you prefer. Um, uh, go with the basics. Focus on those more than anything, you know? They're the same in both of um, them. They're the same. Yeah, oh, the basics, the basic rules of improv remain the same, whether you're doing long form or short form. Yeah, yeah. So focus on the yes and focus on... Uh, the you know agreement and 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 agreeing and committing to the scene and and those types of things, listening to each other, um, and yeah, if you want to do it for you know quick four minute things or you want to do it for twenty five minutes or an hour or if you want to be serious and dramatic or if you want to be <laughs> yeah I'm a clown whatever you want to do it's great have fun just, just up the entire it. week of podcasts for Rick and I yeah exactly yeah <laughs> we're doing <laughs> it's style week baby. Yeah. Um, no, I would totally agree. I would say, uh, in answer to your question, um, would be do whatever makes you happy, you know, like be wherever it makes you happy. If you like doing long form, uh, try short form, see a couple of shows, take a class, like experimenting with different styles of improv is never going to be the wrong choice. Uh, you might find, I'm not really as big a fan of this one as I am about the other one. It doesn't mean that you're right or wrong about some, one being better than the other. That's never what it's about as far as I'm concerned. Uh, but, but experimenting with different styles of improv, long form, short form, grounded and dramatic or silly and wacky, like stretching, doing musical, like there's no right or wrong. Just do what makes you happy because 
that's art in general is you do it for reasons that are not necessarily right because it's right or wrong to do it just is yeah. is fun or entertaining or diverting in some way shape or fashion to you so do what makes you happy if you prefer short form stay there forever i don't care like it doesn't matter um but if you like short form improv you probably would like some aspects of long form if you like long form you're probably gonna like aspects of short form let's yeah, just don't don't be one of those theater snobs that turns their nose towards improv in general or one or the other. In the face. Or one or the other. Yeah, don't be a snob about it. Any way, shape, or form. Yeah, just... find your joy, chase it. I mean, snobbery is never necessary. Like I said, both have different benefits and negatives that are always going to pop out. Like it's easy. Hatab. Yeah, it's. What's Hatab? It's still backwards. <laughs> is it? Yes. I wrote it backwards so it would read right. No, you have a mirrored screen. <laughs> Just write it forward. <laughs> oh, what is that's funny. This is a good um, game. But for yeah, anyone saying they they want to do one or the uh, now that hurts my brain. I feel like I'm in an '80s thriller. Uh, Hatab is both backwards. Uh, is if one makes you happier than the other, just do what makes you happy. I I know a lot of. Uh, like I said, short form will always be more accessible and it's a lot easier to be a weekend warrior as a short form player than it will ever be as a long form player. Most short forms, at least the ones that I know, things like a theater sports or a comedy sports are a, a team, but like a pool of players. And ensemble, yeah. An ensemble, thank you, that's the word I was looking for. Whereas in long form, putting together a team can be a giant pain in the ass. Like quite frankly, besides finding rehearsals, finding a team, finding yeah. like-minded people, or, you know, whatever of that want to play this kind of specific idea or whatever like that it can be very difficult in some places. Whereas a, a short form group can provide an ensemble where you don't have to, you know, not be able to go on because there's only two out of your four dads or uh, one out of three grumpy old men showing up. <laughs> uh, but I, I just, I don't, I get why some people crap on one or the other but i just follow your joy if you're not hurting nobody you're having fun people are enjoying it you're enjoying it go do it uh brian and lex uh what are your like what's one of your favorite short form games describe it yeah. pick one you go brian you first me yeah uh, uh <laughs> my short form game uh would be let's pick know. one I, there's no. a lot of them you gotta give us a second yeah fine a lot. i'll start uh one of my favorite uh we, we didn't ask you tina <laughs> i asked you and i'm answering first you didn't uh, ask you tina <laughs> uh one of my favorite games is like I, it goes by several different names depending on the regionality of where you are but like oscar winning moment uh, which is oh. one where you're doing sort of a mundane sort of scene, like you get a, a suggestion of like a sort of a mundane task or something, and you do sort of a mundane scene, and then at some point uh, a director or somebody outside says, uh, Oscar winning moment and takes your last line of dialogue, and then you have to give like a really impassioned speech that like wins the Oscar and it's dramatic in some sh some fashion, and you have to be super, super bold, and then when that moment's over, usually the music swells and it's like, and then you go back to doing your boring thing and then somebody else does. And that's one of my favorites because it's overly dramatic about something very mundane. I think the juxtaposition of those things is real fun. And just to write on that, I was in a long form narrative show that effectively, while not explicitly just a long form Oscar winning moment, utilized a lot of that to create. It was an Oscar bait long form show that was all about being overly dramatic and using the tropes of like those uh, winter Oscar bait movies. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things that I love so much about short form or what appeals to me and really interacts with me in short form is that it, it soothes my ADD to a great uh, event that I can just keep jumping around and skipping and doing all sorts of different things depending. So my love of games has shifted a lot and changed. I like those kind of things. And at the end of the day, my favorite are always going to be the simplest, usually the basic ones. I love a new choice, a, uh, Ford reverse changing styles because I get to do whatever the heck you know that can come up into those things. Um, advice panels can always be great. What's the what's the one I'm forgetting? I don't know. You said there's a bunch. Uh, blind lines can be uh, fun too, as long as you're on top of your game of getting new and fresh lines. But that's not our fault. That I mean, that's not the audience's fault. That's our fault. No. 
but uh what about you brian uh i uh i enjoy Whoa. instant soap opera um, what's that one uh instant soap opera uh, someone is, uh, so usually three people in the scene, one person's always staring out at the audience, one person's always staring at one of the other people, and the other one is splayed across the back, uh, somehow, some way. Uh, and so when one person changes their posture, everybody else has to change to do one of those three things. And when you screw up, the um, audience calls you. It's like a variation of Sitsi and Neil. Sitsi and Neil. Yeah. 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 The idea um, is, those, instead of uh, just finding those people, it can create a normal scene to look super dramatic. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, which, again, the last Improv Royale we did, that was the short form basis for the form that we did, which was the super dramatic dun dun dun. Um, yeah. That and Scooby Doo. Melodrama. Scooby Doo is. Uh, I love. <laughs> wait, wait, tell us Scooby Doo real quick. Yeah. This will... Real quick. Scooby Doo, uh, you're doing a scene and you're like, wait. That you're not grandma, you're, and then they rip off the mask and it's Abraham Lincoln or oh. it's, yeah, uh, yeah, uh, they're oh, bullies from awesome. middle school <laughs> or whatever. And you're just endowing people with, with whatever. Uh, yeah. The ghost of Perry Cuomo. <laughs> Guys, thank you oh, so God. much for joining me today. Um, no! Oh, God. <laughs> oh, 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 <laughs> Lex, you want to last scratch the surface of this argument? Like, I know, forever and ever. <laughs> It's part of the reason I asked Lex to be on this one. I was like, oh, you got to hear Lex talk about long form versus short form. Oh, no, it's fantastic. Yeah. Really quickly, just a couple of random things. Some of the, I think one of the things about short form besides its its accessibility is the fact that I genuinely do think with a uh, some people, with a, a referee or a remote control, a director, whatever you want to call it, uh, you can go to places, you will be pushed into places in short form that you otherwise would never uh, be to go. You think you'll think things you didn't. You'll play styles and things that make you. We in any form of improv often uh, encourage people to go into their un discomfort zones, uh, not necessarily physical, as uh, your thing on uh, what's the word consent and stuff like that uh, goes. But uh, you'll just in short form, you're more likely to suddenly have to sing something or that you may not be comfortable with. Do accents you can't do. Yeah. Uh, get choices no, I, like a blind line. That's kind of what I was thinking when you guys were talking about the different games is like, uh, I was like, oh man, I haven't done some of those in such a long time. And I, and I don't challenge myself on purpose in a long, in the freedom of long form doesn't push me to those places all the time. Whereas in short form, I have often been uh, like <laughs> gifted uh, that I have to sing something and I'm like, shit, well, here it goes. I'm not comfortable doing this, but I will yeah, yes yeah. the hell out of it because that's what the show requires. So when the show requires it, I can do it, but I don't choose that for myself. So I like short form for making me do some of that stuff. So uh, if if there was one strict benefit over it, I think that would be it. Yeah, I think so too. Uh, I, think I, right. I love that I'm talking to folks that just plain out love improv and you guys love, <laughs> you, you love your long form, you love your short form. Um, this is fantastic. And I love Tina, exactly like what you said earlier, don't be a snob about it. Uh, short form is fun, long form is fun. It's all, it's all games, it's all pretend. And uh, there's no reason why we can't enjoy everything. Guys, thank you so much for being on this show today. I had a freaking great time talking to you. Um, Tina Jackson, owner and operator of Bear Stage here in San Antonio. Thank you so much for being my middle square. Appreciate it. Always. Oh, that's me. Uh, yeah. Uh, Lex Simpson, uh, one of the big players here in San Antonio. Thank you for being on my show for the second time. I appreciate it. Hope I have you on many, many more times. For uh, chapters two through seven of Short Form. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, part, yeah exactly. <laughs> uh, Brian Scribner, uh, the man that introduced me to long form. Um, thank you so much for being on my show, and I hope to have you on a lot more, along with your beard as well. Thank you. It's getting majestic. It's getting Both. wizard level. <laughs> all right, and also thank you to all of our Twitch followers. Appreciate the um, the suggestions, the ideas. Thank you all for being here. Uh, guys, the last thing that I want to say is, does it feel like we're all living in crazy town? Because right now, I think we're all feeling that. Um, all of the community theaters, improv theaters around the country are in quite a lot of pain right now. Peril. And they're in peril. They're in peril. And, peril. And the reality is that it might be a while before we can all actually go to them. So if you if you enjoyed this discussion, if, if, if you've never been to improv before, you've never seen it, but this strikes your fancy, something about this sounds interesting to you, 
go online, find some online improv theaters or improv theaters that are doing stuff online because right now so many improv theaters are going online and putting out some fantastic content. Uh, and then when you start watching them, come back to this show and then I, I have no doubt that we'll be discussing something that you saw on those online shows. Uh, if you're in the San Antonio area uh, and you appreciated this, go to bearstage.com and you'll find a link where you can donate to show your appreciation to the Bear Stage community uh, of, of improv that has been put together and has been going, uh, going on for three years now here in San Antonio. Uh, guys, thank you. Oh, and one more thing. We have another show Wednesday of this week. Guys, six o'clock. Rick, yeah. what are we doing this week? We, uh, we will be talking about uh, dramatic improv, actually. That'll be a, a an awesome show uh I'm, I'm actually super looking forward to it uh and one more thing i want to plug um a group that brian is in uh here in san antonio it's called my four dads and they're putting out tons of content online go to facebook do a search for my four dads and you'll find some great stuff on there to keep you entertained and throwing quarantine for better everybody or Brett, yeah, there's thank you. He's not taking any responsibility for my project. <laughs> yep. <laughs> not affiliated with Paris. You will see. You will see dad bods, and you will see so much dad bod. I mean, wow, we just got seven hundred. I hope you appreciate it. <laughs> uh, you know, I, I think it's. I think it's time to cut. I this. think that's it. I think we're out. <laughs> thank you all. <laughs>